Hi babes, welcome to the first episode of Mules and Murder Swim Club, where we dive into the cases that are happening right now together. If you're on social media in the true crime space like at all, you've probably heard the news that Rudy Farias, who went missing in 2015 at the age of 17, was found earlier this week. When I came across the first people like crime article about this, about his reappearance, I was jazzed, of course. Any time that a minor who is missing for a significant amount, a significant period of time is found, you're thankful for that child and that family, of course, but it also gives you a lot of hope for the other missing kids out there. But real fast, I'm, and I'm talking within one day, it became very clear that this news wasn't what it looked like on the surface. I'm gonna warn you right now that this video will leave you with more questions than answers, but we're gonna keep learning about this case together. Let's get into it. Eight years ago, on March 6, 2015, 17-year-old Rudolf Rudy Farias was reported missing after he failed to come home after leaving the house to walk the family dogs. The description of the circumstances were listed as follows. Rudy was last seen near Tidwell and Park Drive around 6.30 p.m. on March 6, 2015. At the time Rudy went missing, he was walking his two dogs, and the dogs have been found, but Rudy is still missing. Rudy has an injured right leg and walks with a slight limp. Rudy also suffers from depression, PTSD, and anxiety. He has attempted suicide in the past. It is possible he is disoriented as he has not been taking his medication. Rudy is also asthmatic, but is not in possession of his inhaler. According to his mother, he is very wary around strangers. So if you have seen Rudy or have information about his missing status, please call the Houston Police Missing Persons Department. Then, two years after Rudy's disappearance, his uncle actually spoke at the Houston Missing Persons Day in his honor talking about the nephew he hoped would one day be found. I'm here to speak on behalf of my nephew, Rudy Farias IV. Um, he was known as shy, quiet, reserved young man. Then, radio silence. There has been no update, that is, until July 3rd of 2023. And that's when all of these articles hit the internet. Great news, right? Let's look at the initial details that were given as a part of the story of his miraculous recovery. Rudy was found unresponsive outside of a church, leading bystanders to call 911. His mother shared a photo of him in his hospital bed, saying he was found with cuts and bruises all over his body and blood in his hair, and that she believes he was badly abused and beaten. Additionally, that they have tried talking to him, but he'll only say a few words and then go just go into a fetal position. She said it would be a long healing journey, but she's very thankful that her son has been found alive. So, I mean, we have all of the necessary elements here for a heartbreaking yet heartwarming story. Rudy's been missing for eight years. He's been found badly beaten, bruised, abused, but his mom is right there to be his rock and get him through whatever the process of healing from this trauma will look like. It even sounds like there's a perpetrator out there still needing to be caught and brought to justice for keeping Rudy from his family, from his life, and leaving him in this deplorable condition. While there is no mention in these articles of somebody like being caught in relation to this, it seems like steps are being made to get to the bottom of his disappearance. But then, well, we start seeing articles like this. According to Any Neighbor Asked of Janie Alexis Santana, who is Rudy's mom, they were shocked to learn that he was missing. From an ABC 13 article that was released on July 5th, Kisha Ross and her family were shocked to find out that Rudolf Rudy Farias was found because they <laughs> straight up just never knew that he was reported missing. Civil court records reveal that his mother lives on the same street as the Ross family in Northeast Houston. He used to come in my garage, chill with my cousin, son, and daughter, Ross said. That boy has never been missing. They know him as Dolph, short for his given name, Rudolph. They said he goes to their home often, but that they haven't seen him in the last few weeks. Then, from this same article, 
Apparently, Janie, Rudy's mom, spoke to the reporter covering the case, whose name is Brooke Taylor, who has done gangbusters work. Shout out to her. And Janie gave Brooke this same statement about the blood and the bruises, but she also added that she believed someone had kidnapped Rudy and held him captive all of these years. After the stories from her neighbors broke, Brooke Taylor, amazing journalist that she is, visited the Farias residence to speak to Janie in person, where she said that the man that her neighbors are talking about, who they think was Rudy, um, was actually her nephew, and she provided a nephew of said photo to Brooke. Brooke, being that kick-ass reporter that she absolutely is, turned right back to those neighbors and showed them this picture and was like, hey, have you guys, you guys just saw this guy or what? What's, what's the story here? And the neighbors were like, no, <laughs> no, we know that we are talking about Rudy because it's Rudy who we have seen. <laughs> In this same article, we also learned that in 2018, a Farias family member had called HPD to say that Rudy was living behind a family member's home, but when police arrived, they did not find any trace of him. So, like, just to sum up where we're at right now, Rudy was reported missing in 2015. His uncle spoke out at Houston's Missing Persons Day in 2017 about his disappearance, his continued status as a missing person. And then fast forward to July 2023, we have the news that Rudy is found unresponsive and beaten, bloody, bruised in front of a church. Mom tells us that she believes a kidnapper has been holding him for this eight year span and that he has a long road of recovery before him, but they'll get through it. Then we hear from the neighbors who are like, no, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't even even know what's going on because Rudy was never missing. Then a great journalist, Brooke, does what great journalists do and brings this information to his mom who tells us this weird story that the man her neighbors have been seeing is her nephew and gives the journalist a photo of a random guy who the neighbors confirm is not the man they know as Dolph. Already, there is so much going on here that I don't understand, but it's about to get even more insane. Enter community activist Quinnell X. We're not here to discuss Quinnell, that's not this video. We're going to talk about the information he has shared regarding what he claims Rudy told him he's been going through for these past eight years. He says that he was with Rudy while he was being questioned by investigators and that Rudy revealed just straight up horrors, actual horrors regarding his time spent as a missing person. According to Quinnell, Rudy had the following to say. He says that Rudy said that he did, in fact, run away in 2015. The truth, however, is that he returned a day or two later, and Janie, his mom, told him that he had to stay hidden or else the police would arrest him. Directly from Quinnell, she convinced him that he was in trouble for initially running away and that law enforcement wanted to arrest him for running away. She had convinced him that all types of agencies were looking for him. Quinnell went on to say that Rudy told him that his mother then wouldn't allow him to leave the home. And in her efforts to keep him homebound, she also implemented abuse in that process, including S.A. Reporters coming in clutch here. They ask Quinnell the obvious question. Why didn't Rudy, as a 25-year-old man, just leave? Quinnell explained that Rudy shed light on that as well. His mother kept him on drugs, psychoactive drugs, and that he was afraid to seek help from law enforcement. Going on, Quinnell also said that Rudy told him he spent years unable to leave the home, but once his mother believed that enough time had passed that no one would, like, put two and two together, she allowed him to hang out with neighbors, and she took him to work with her. I heard horrific things from that young man, and I did not want him to see me start shedding tears, but I couldn't hold back the tears because of the things he was saying to us. So there are more like sorted details in the entirety of Quinnell's interview and I'm going to include a link to that down below and I want you to go watch it. Please go watch it. See if you think this man is making this up because I don't. Anyway, that's foreshadowing. Anyway, anyway. Then, just today, the Houston PD held a press conference where they tried to clear the air on a few aspects of this straight up just insane, nonsensical story. They have now stated that Rudy was never missing and that he had, in fact, returned home the day after he was reported missing. 
Also, according to HPD, Rudy himself had had contact with the police department, but himself and his mother had continuously given fake names and birthdays to police. Their specific verbiage here is, Rudy's mother continued to deceive police by remaining adamant that he was still missing. The police also stated that during their interview with Rudy, he did not make any claims of essay or abuse in general, revealing that Rudy is now back with his mother, quote unquote, quote unquote, quote unquote, by choice. They went on to say that Janie Santana will not face charges for the false reporting of Rudy's disappearance, but that an investigation into this whole show, for lack of a better word, is still ongoing. I have, so, <laughs> I have so many questions, but we'll get to the I don't understand what's going on phase of this at the end of the video. Then, today, it was also revealed that a local Houston resident had posted to a Facebook missing persons group on behalf of someone named Alexis regarding their missing family member, Gabriel. The contact phone number that was given, should anybody have any information on Gabriel, is registered to Rudy's mom. And the photo she used is almost certainly that of a 20 something year old Rudy. She also straight up just doesn't have a son named Gabriel. So it's like, oh, let me give you this fact. She had another son, Charles Travis, who passed away in a motorcycle accident before Rudy ever disappeared. So what the actual f is she doing? Posting a picture of someone who is ostensibly Rudy under the name Gabriel just days before he is found then there's like a whole mess regarding his mom's tiktok i'm gonna put a link to this fabulous newsweek article detailing that aspect of this situation in the description below you should go check it out she does not seem like a well person if you know what i mean and that as far as i can tell is all of the information that we have as of july 6 2023 so let's ask the obvious questions right so a if Rudy was never missing, why was his uncle giving a speech two years after he disappeared, sounding like a legitimate family member who wishes that his loved one would be found? B, why immediately after he was found, is his mom shooting off her mouth, saying he looked bloody, bruised, abused, and that she thought a kidnapper was holding him this entire time? C, why is she telling lies about the man who was obviously Rudy, seen for years, by her neighbors saying, no, 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 no. That was my nephew. And then providing a photo of a random dude who the neighbors then are easily like, nope, don't know this guy. We were seeing Rudy and we know it's him because we know Rudy. Then D, how did he end up unresponsive in front of that church? Can somebody answer that question? Then we have E. Why did Quinnell X, who is no stranger to the media and the press and making public statements, come forward with this story, apparently from Rudy, only for the police to say that he never said any of that to us. If he was never really missing, what investigation is there to continue? And finally, why, shortly before Rudy is found in this condition, is his mom getting some random lady to post his picture under a different name as another missing person? Am I wrong in saying that there are just so many bad vibes surrounding all of this? I don't trust Rudy's mom as far as I can throw her. I don't trust anything she said about Rudy and I don't trust anything that Rudy may have told the police so soon after potentially escaping her clutches, especially if he went right back to living with her. Hot take. I also don't think that Quinnell X would have gotten his ass on TV with these statements, with this story, if it hadn't been communicated to him somehow. My brain right now is viewing this situation like this. So Rudy does run away that day in March of 2015. Then he does return home one day later. And then his mom, who does not seem like the most stable individual in the world, does she maybe see this as an opportunity? Rudy gets back and she thinks, well, no one has to know that you're not missing anymore except for me. Then keeping in mind that Rudy has apparently already dealt with mental health struggles, she does start sedating him or drugging him in combination with feeding him the lies that the police want to arrest him for running away. This goes on until she feels like 
like Quinnell said, that enough time had passed that he wouldn't be recognized. Maybe Rudy doesn't have an amazing grasp on reality anymore through the trauma and stress and drugs, or maybe he simply believes his mom that the cops will put him in jail for running away. So he agrees to this whole fake name situation. Maybe, recently, he actually did run away, for real this time, which Quinnell also alluded to, but Janie can't very well report her already missing son, like, double missing, so she goes grassroots. She feeds Rudy's photo to a good person under a fake name, hoping the community will help her catch him and keep this secret. I don't know, that's me spitballing. It could be that it's not so serious or dramatic at all, and there's just a stack of red herrings in this case by mere coincidence. I can't get over the video of Rudy's uncle two years after he disappeared speaking like that. Why didn't he know that his nephew wasn't actually missing? What does his mom gain from keeping him a missing person? It feels like we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg in this bizarre case, and I'll be keeping up with it as news comes out. What I really want to know is what's your take on what's happening here? I'll be hanging out in the comments after this goes up because I truly want to hear your perspective on this. I told you at the beginning of this video that we would end it with more questions than answers, but hopefully more news will arise in the coming days, weeks, and months. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm Maddie from Mules and Murder, and I will see you in the next one.